Good morning, YouTube. Last day of our trip, getting back home, and, uh... It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. We fell asleep early. We, we went through Walmart there uh, after we, you know, did our subway crap, and I sat here at the table closing out. Heidi was in bed, and... I don't know. Once she climbs into bed, I start thinking about going to sleep. Normally, the only thing that keeps me from climbing into bed the same time she does is she don't want me in there because I'll be snoring. He was snoring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he fell asleep first. Yeah. That's usually what happens is I stay out in the living room at home until she falls asleep, and then I'll eventually wander into bed. But I was a little bit tired, so I thought, and I went ahead and I climbed into bed, and here we are. It's it was two thirty, and I said, "Up, oh, uh, I'm kind of awake." And then as soon as I start getting some thoughts in my head, I can't go back to sleep. I my I start thinking about stuff, and it's like, well, if it's two thirty, we're about three hours from home. It put us there before six or around six o'clock. I might be able to back in the driveway because the traffic's not that bad. Because the drive is horrible, and we don't know how we're going to get the RV back in its spot. Unless I back in our driveway, which you guys know we live on a busy state route. So at a traffic light, it's kind of hard to do. Um, and we may still not be able to do it. But anyways, I started thinking about it. And so I told her as we'd laid in bed, she, she ran to the bathroom at Walmart since we have everything winterized. And uh, then I was shortly after. We, that way we keep an eye on the RV. And I... Uh, climb back into bed she's back in bed and it's like well i can't fall asleep maybe we should go so that's what we're doing we're going we're heading back home and uh yeah we got to go through pittsburgh but it's so early i don't think it's going to make a difference so we'll we'll see though
back home, aren't we? Yay! We've been home for a while, and uh, the reason that we didn't do an update when we first got home is it was dark out. A little bit tired, which we're still tired. We didn't take a nap or anything. Uh, I did take a shower, though. <laughs> then we had to go, uh, well, we didn't have to. We went out for breakfast, and then we went to uh, rent a storage place, uh, a parking space for the RV for this winter. Now, every winter for I don't know how many years this RV sat in the park in this parking area. Our pop-ups, everything has always sat in our driveway or you guys know that I set up those railroad ties for the parking. The one thing is is we never really knew how we could go camping in the winter. Uh, and I knew that we would probably make a mess because the yards get real soft here in Ohio. If you guys aren't familiar with the way it is in this state, I have tire marks that have showed up in the yard just in the middle of the summer, just me driving through one time, there's tire prints that will stay in the yard all summer long. Whenever you have actually a wet season and you know where you're into a lot of rain, cooler temperatures, freezing and thawing, that kind of a thing, uh, you have potentially big messes. Like this one. So look what Heidi did. First of all, look at the yard here. This is me keeping just the front tires in the yard. The back tires I could not take and put in that yard, not, not even close. It's just that bad here. You see the tires now on the truck, how muddy they are. Oh my, looky here. Yeah, you see there was railroad ties, railroad ties that are there. Uh, the RV put those railroad ties there. Um, as we drove over them, Heidi was standing over in this area as I was trying to negotiate up onto uh, those railroad ties and I was looking at them in the mirror. In the meantime, the other side of the RV was uh, unrooting. They were unrooting them. So this is the kind of crap that you can expect in this state. So I've got to figure out uh, how to get this cleaned off now you can see there's snow on the ground N not a big deal it's it's relatively warm out i don't know what do you think it is it's about like 37 yeah about 37 degrees we need to hurry up but we got to get the hose out um the hose reel that we already put out put away for the winter <laughs> and uh turn on our water again and then i'm going to come out here and we're going to uh blow all this off the rv uh, i'm going to pull the truck up in the driveway further and that way, uh, whatever mud we rinse off, unfortunately, is going to be in the driveway. Um, well, I'll try to get it off as much as I can here. But once we pull up in the driveway, then uh, at some point, we're going to uh, unload everything out of the RV, everything we possibly can think of, uh, find a location for it. And we're going to take it to the storage place, which it's outdoor storage. Uh, it's not indoor. And it's... It's about 50 bucks a month. We could have got it as cheap as $25 a month, but the location that they was gonna have us in uh, was not to where we could actually hook up and go camping in the winter if we wanted to. Again, this is the whole reason. This yard is the whole reason why we ev never tried to go camping in the winter after uh, you know season had basically been over. I still got to figure out if these railroad ties damaged anything underneath the RV. I don't think they did, but what a freaking mess. Yeah, I, I think it might be time for the uh, railroad ties to go bye-bye. And uh, we'll regain our driveway again. We'll have some gravel dropped in here at some point or something. But yeah, this is really bad. Ugh. All right, got to get to work. Morning YouTube, it's the next day. Uh, we did very little. I got home and I told her I didn't want to do any more. Um, of course, I did rinse off everything. Not very well, but I had to get just our garden hose out and spray everything off. I'm kind of glad that I hit the back of the RV with the garden hose because it was much dirtier than I thought. Just to give you an idea, I keep on wanting to point this out to you guys. You can see how low our RV is. I mean, the step, that bottom step is darn near touching. And the RV is not even level. 
and our slope in our driveway is not that crazy. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages of having a low RV is being able to level it. Uh, if we were at a campground right now, I would have to drive the thing up or back the thing up over some wood or drive up on some wood uh, to raise it so I could lower it. And again, you can see the steps almost touching. RV's being cleaned out by the wonderful Heidi. Uh, she's been in here working her butt off and getting it very muddy. Yep. We'll be cleaning it up. Um, but we're getting everything out of here. Uh, today, what I got to do, uh, and it's by design, uh, as far as the way I set this up whenever we put it together, um, I got to pull this table out. And it's very easy, of course. It's just a pole and then that hinge. Uh, that hinge is just like this hinge here. And then once the uh, table is out, underneath here I just take out a couple of screws because I have brackets that are secured to the floor that this seat sits in. And once I take those screws out, the seat just slides forward and I can access the battery. So a little bit of finagling around, but not very bad. I mean, it's just uh, roughly three or four screws that holds this seat to the brackets and then the brackets are screwed into the wood through the carpet and everything so once the batteries are out uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take some other things out too uh, just so we don't have to worry I'm trying to work this I, I we hardly take this out so um, we just want to be able to put it in storage and not have to worry about the thing being taken <laughs> and what I mean by taking it is us being taken <laughs> to the cleaners by somebody who uh, wants to steal everything they can the the place is relatively secure I, I mean it's a gated keyed entry place it's stored outdoors but that don't mean anything. yeah it they got a lot of cameras and she says all the cameras mean is that you can watch people if they're doing something wrong but she she was very clear she said they've hardly the biggest thing they have a problem with is domestic you know people hey that's my stuff you know you can't come into my storage and take it we're divorced now she said it that's the kind of drama she gets but yeah we're going to uh get this thing all taken care of and cleaned out and uh i gotta go through some stuff in the back and of course most of that stuff uh well we gotta put into the garage for the time being didn't want you to see the code <laughs> <laughs> not that anybody wants anything in here oh maybe there's a couple generators in here so uh yeah we gotta we gotta put most of the stuff in here uh for the time being and then at some point i gotta tackle all this i gotta clean all this out because whatever car we get um again i don't know if you guys know what our plan is i guess that's probably a good time to talk about that huh you know the truck was on its last trip this was the last trip that we were going to take uh pulling the rv uh with the old truck now that may change. I don't know. We we might do something little. I doubt it, though. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the truck that's in the background here, that one needs to be uh, fitted and suited up uh, with a hitch that's going to be pulling this low, low RV. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, the hitch is much taller than our other hitch, so we'll have to put a pretty good drop on there. So once I do sell this truck, the old F-250, once that gets sold, uh, we're going to go ahead and purchase something for Heidi uh, she's selling her car out front there she just don't like it and she wants something a little bit newer a little bit nicer and, and I don't blame her at all uh, she's driving the truck until all this happens you know till that time comes uh, it's just one of those things that uh, we, we don't want to drive the truck other than like we do our truck now it works out really well other than the fact that the truck sits in this wet environment um, we like the fact that my old F-250 don't get a lot of miles put on it until we tow. I mean, it basically sits until we tow. That's a plus, that's a minus. Um, on a newer vehicle, it's a plus. But on an older vehicle, you know, the longer the vehicle sits, you got to be concerned about corrosion, body corrosion, stuff like that. So, uh, whatever we end up getting for Heidi, getting back to the garage, uh, she, she always parks in the garage in the winter. That way, when she gets up in the morning for work, she don't have to clean off snow or anything. The garage door goes up, she gets in her car, she backs out in the driveway, she turns around and goes to work. She's done. She don't have to, again, clean off the snow or anything. But that requires this garage to be clean, and there's a lot of stuff in this garage that we don't have a place for necessarily. Our basement is only so big, 
and uh, we were trying to keep it relatively organized so that whenever we decide to organize for yard sale stuff, which there's a lot of yard sale stuff already down there, uh, that we have room for it. Uh, the problem is, is in this case, we've got uh, part of the van project still going on. We got wood over here. We've got a lot of his building material in this box still, and we've got a lot of uh, building material back there, and screws and nuts and bolts and all kinds of crap. So we got to figure out where that's going to go. Uh, this wood, I, I don't know. I, I, I've got a lot of stuff to do, but let's focus on today and right now, and that's gutting out the RV, uh, cleaning it up. Truck running because uh, we wanted to make sure that we still had power to our jack because uh, I've got the batteries off here and uh, we got it pretty much cleaned out. Uh, I'm not going to put my weight distribution bars and stuff on just to drag it up the straight there. It's only about four miles we got to go. But Heidi's inside here and she's uh, doing a one more clean in here, sweeping everything. Like I said, the batteries are from underneath here now. You can see they're gone back there, empty. And uh, the chair is, uh, I didn't bolt it back down um, because it's its in brackets and you know, I mean, it's gonna move, but I'm not, but only going four miles up the street. If we uh, decide to do any winter camping, that's something entirely different. I can wash these, so that's yeah. Them. yeah, that's nice because we used to have a runner in here. Uh, I'll move this out of the way. And this little sweeper's done a good job, that's for sure. We've uh, only charged it one time, <laughs> and we haven't charged it since. <laughs> it's been doing pretty good. It's really muddy here. Uh, the back of the trunk's all cleared out. This is the first time, like I said, that we've actually taken it somewhere to store it, so it was kind of odd. I mean, we took out a lot of stuff we put in the basement, and I told her, I said, the next time if we store next winter, I said, there is no way that we're going to, uh, we're not going to have some place that's secured, uh, you know, indoors, that kind of thing, things, climate cool. control. Yeah, I knew that they would do something. I figured you'd just leave them on there. No. Let it dry. Oh, yeah. It's going to be interesting. The only reason I can think for sure that we might have to drag the, the trailer out of there, other than maybe going camping, is if we decide uh, we're going to set up the uh, hitch for the truck in the camper uh, before this ground dries. Okay. Thanks, honey. Uh, because that's going to take a while. Yeah, you can see. I don't, I don't know how to. It's kind of hard to show in this camera how low this hitch is, but. Yeah, uh, this truck is not even up to my shin, I guess. You can say with the top of that shank that goes in the receiver, and as you can tell walking back here, it's at my knee actually at the top of the things about the top of my knee so yeah that's quite a bit all right I gotta lock this thing up uh, hopefully we don't drag that flap too much not having uh, you know a little bit of leveling but I do have less weight in there too so all right let's go back to the uh, storage unit hopefully the gate code works okay so I got it tucked up in here pretty darn good it leans a little bit towards the awning side and a little bit back uh, and there is a snow break up here as far as snow coming down on this. As far as water overwhelming the gutters, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, again, we'll put the cover on here in a few days or weeks uh, when it's a little bit nicer out. I did have to go up on the blocks here to make it level. And uh, we did put down the jacks just to keep... Uh, some of the pressure off of the oh, tires and the springs. Your rocket scientist to lock that. Oh, she has a hard time with this latch. <laughs> I don't know why. It's latched. Oh, so oh, wait I a minute. Just... Did you lock it? No. Yeah, it's latched. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we went ahead and we cleaned it out. Even the gutter, the the little sewer gutter, the sewer hose, the stinky slinky. We took that out too. But all right, so this is going to be it. You can see here's our space number. 
six and number seven, and we hardly use any of seven. Uh, so if I find something else we need to park up here, maybe I can do that. <laughs> but we're done. We're out of here.